Good morning fellow archers. Today we have a quick update video to my Oneida Osprey. Frank Bartholmes from Germany was so kind to send me a DIY aero rest shelf for it. Contains two parts of foam and you see it's nice in a, in a, you know, here in a curve and this one is slightly curved and it put some fur on it and I simply sticked it on now with double sided tape. So what we get is now a center shot bow and of course the arrow is a little higher. I heard of course one said that the arrow needs to be higher than the, I forgot the name of the screw hole here. So this I still don't manage so the arrow will be still too low. But we simply try this one now out and see how it works. I shoot the same target because remember I, my arrows went way to the left because it was not a center shot was left of center. So now it should be a little bit short distance first, obviously. And for all the ones who commented, I should good then because I shoot it wrong again and I should get one with the arrow rest on the left side. So I have a right-handed bow. I shot these bows and I don't want to shoot this bow three fingers. I want to try and that was the purpose, the whole purpose of this first video and the whole purpose I bought this bow. I wanted to have a left hand version so I can shoot thumb release with it. So I knew what I was doing. So thanks for your concerns. And of course, if I'm happy with this one, then I can make my knocking point. But now let's see. So they went way to the left. Let's see what they do now. Ooh. <laughs> Need just a shot. So these are 500 spine, only a little too long. Hmm, still too low, but not so much to the left anymore, huh? So far the shelf works great, it's silent. The arrow only touches the shelf on the small part here on top and on the small part here on the side, so which is great. Maybe I need stiffer arrows, let's see. But only the height now, need to get the feeling for this one. <laughs> nice. Frank, thank you. So now it's time to split an arrow, huh? No. And the arrows are relative, so 500 spine works for me. The arrows are a little too long. I will get the perfect arrow for them. Nice, let's try longer distance. Now it's so much more fun to shoot with it because you more likely know what the bow is going to do or not like before. But still it takes a while until I really get there. You saw the wobble? So this one really needs time, practice, but I guess it's worth it. And as you see, I shoot with a leather protection glove and not with a thumb ring today, so might cause problems either. Ah, but we start shooting a group. They're a little too low and a little to the left. So it's not bad. The only thing what happens is here, the thing comes easily loose. So I just lost it when I test shot it. So this one, this double-sided tape is not the most durable one. So out in the fields, not sure if I would trust this one or you need to always have a separate with you just in case you lose it somewhere that you can fix it. Solution can be this one. I got this from my friend Tom Andrews in America. He told me that there is a shelf made for these bows to shoot from the shelf or off the shelf bow hunting rest from Boondock Outdoors. It's I think 30 bucks. I wanted to order it but they didn't ship to Malta so simply Tom ordered one for me and sent it to me. Thank you very much Tom. And what you get there is a nice one piece plastic durable arrow shelf which you can screw on. You get to felt stripes so you can put even felt on it so it's a bit more silent. 
you get the screw, obviously, and you get a silicon. Oh, it's too windy. One second. And you get a silicon gel, which you should apply on the outside, so this thing sits a little more snug. I will put this now on without the silicone because I first want to see what it does and if I like it more than my foam one and then we go from there. I wish they would have included a uh, Allen key. I don't have one here now but we simply hand tighten it. So and it's quite simple. You have this thingy on the back. You push it in. The only thing I don't like is that it's larger than this cutout here. So you have a... but it's, yeah, it's me. And you simply put this one here, easy peasy, and put the screw in. So now I don't have, a set an Allen key, because I'm not prepared at all. I thought that might be uh, uh, Come on, get it. So now you have it. So this is how this one looks. Looks a little more professional, obviously. Look at this. Nice and fancy. And here the arrow rests even on a smaller part. You see that only on these two small edges of this. Jesus, now it gets windy. I see if I can tighten it a little better. Let me shoot it. Looks quite professional and nice and shiny. Of course, if it works, I will put the felt on it that it's not so loud, but only for testing now. Yet still, there is the hole and the arrow rests still a little underneath. So most probably it's not the perfect solution for getting the maximum performance. But all the whisker biscuits and all this stuff doesn't make sense for thumb release. So thanks for your comments. Oh! So now knocking point on it and then everything is fine, I guess. Hmm. It's a little higher, which makes my life easier. And the arrow rests really only on the small part here, less friction. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Same 15 meter shot. Let's see what happens there. Before I missed a little. I look at this. That's pretty cool. Oh, that was a bad shot. And I need a knocking point. Yep. Only a knocking point for the rest. Look at this. Works a little better. So I guess I stick with this one. I will put it now properly with the silicone in the back and I will put the, the, the fur on it and then I will show you how it works. But of course when you put the silicone on you need to let it cure 24 hours so. And we start with the heavy ones, 400 spine, 500 grain, the bow, so somebody told me now that it should be set to 38, 40 poundish, so not 30 pound like I thought in my initial video. Nice, these heavy arrows are just, and then Oneida likes heavy arrows. Look at this. These are the 500 spine with the heavy tips, 450 grain. It's time for a knocking point. Huh? And these are the 500 spine with the lightweight tip there, 424 or something. I shoot a little to the right, I don't want to ruin my arrows. But not too much. Let's head it and shoot to the left again. Aye, aye, aye. Oh yeah, once you focus a little, 
This 500 spine, the lightweight ones, just work nice. So let's see the angle. So now, you see these are the 400 spine. They're a little stiffer, they stick a little more straight. And the 500s have a slight angle, so I guess stiffer is better. First round I shot with the glove. Now we use the thumb ring and we shoot 20 meters. Because I hope we can. <laughs> Let's see. Or 18 meters to be precisely. The 400 grain, uh, 500 grain, 400 spine. Oops. Oh, they dropped then directly. Look at this. We missed the target. Really? Oh yeah, get there. 450 grain, 500 spine. So I need to hit the target. It's embarrassing. I blame it because I don't have a knocking point on it. Oops, I was looking at the zero. And of course you hit it, you need to focus on where you wanna, oops. Came off, my ring came off. Today, it's not working today. So, Ostro. but you saw already a little wobble, so 500 spine. It's not going to work. These are the lightweight ones, so they are more like 500. The other ones were a little weaker because of the heavier tip, so the dynamic spine was a little different. Look at this, huh? These are my favorite arrows here. 500 spine, 424 grain. Oops. I see it takes a few shots and then you know what this bow is doing. Oops. Said it and missed almost. <coughs> what I want to try is one of these Tonkin bamboo arrows. Yes, I know I need to still do the review, but I still don't have my fletched arrows because these horn knocks don't fit in our fletching chicks, so it's a little tricky to fletch them, so you most probably need to do it manually. This is 438 grain. Spine I don't know anymore, but they are, I think, 40 pounds or something. So it should be fine. Let's see, first time I shoot a bamboo arrow from a compound bow. Without feathers on it, so to do a bear shaft test, right? Came a little off, but ye. Back to the glove. 400 spine. Stiff, stiff, heavy. That's something for the ornader. Nice. <laughs> so this arrow rest is a little more durable. There I miss an arrow. And the other bottom part doesn't come off. So it's nice. They fly just nice. String twist. <laughs> joking. And the lightweight ones, right? Yeah. One day I will get the hang of it. And we focus a little more. Care of your release. Then these arrows stay 500 spine, they fly nice. <laughs> Incredible bow, and this arrow rest really does make sense. So this is, I don't have to think about it. The other one I shot off a few times, so this one is nice. I will put another felt on it and then I'm good to go. And only so you see different spines, different weights. Not that big of a difference, now the 500s were flying nicer, but it's a matter of release with this bow. You really need to have a very smooth, very... don't know yet, but the release is important for this bow that the arrow flies straight. Again, thank you Tom for sending one to me. I wanted to order it, but it was a problem in the software that they didn't ship to Malta. They ship everywhere these things, so if you want to have them, I can put the link in the description to Boondog. <laughs> 
nice. So it's very reliable, very accurate. And now I can put my knocking point and put the felt on it. And if there's a big difference, I will do another video because I just love to shoot this bow and directly film myself doing it. <laughs> That's all I have for you today. Thank you very much for watching. Catch you in the next one.